Okay, everybody, Mr. Quick here, and we're going to jump into Eureka Math slash Engage New York Math, Module 1, Lesson 8, Equivalent Ratios Defined Through the Value of a Ratio. We briefly touched on this in the last lesson, but we didn't really get into what it was all about, but we talked about the value of a ratio, and we also talked about looking at ratios in terms of fractions, and that's a big part of what we're going to do today. This lesson should go pretty quick, but it is an important one, so let's get started. Okay, here's some examples. These all come from Eureka Math. These are just a set of ratios. They're giving us a ratio and they're asking us to find the value of said ratio. Well, the ratio 1 to 2, we know we can write that as 1 over 2. I don't know if you can hear that. That's my dog in the background barking and making a cameo appearance here. Okay, so looking at the ratio 1 to 2 as 1 half, the value of the ratio, when I want you to think of value, I want you to think of that as simplest form. When you think of the value of simplest, the value of ratio, I want you to think of that as simplest form. 1 over 2 is 1 half. It can't be simplified. So in this case, the value of the ratio is 1 half. If we look at the next ratio, which is 5 to 10, if we write that as a fraction, if we're looking at 5 tenths, we know you can divide both of those by the magic number of 5. 5 divided by 5 is 1. 10 divided by 5 is 2. The value of that ratio is also 1 half. So if you look at 1 to 2 and 5 to 10, those ratios are equivalent because they both have the same value. They're both, the value of both is one half. Okay, looking at our next ratio, six to 16. And I'm gonna write down below so I have a little bit more room to, to write here. I'm gonna write that as a fraction, six sixteenths. Well, the ratio is six to 16. The value, I know I can find a magic number. Those are both even numbers, so I can divide it at least by two. Uh, the numbers that go into 6 are 1, which we can't use, 2, and 3. 3 does not go into 16, so we're going to go with 2. 6 divided by 2 gives us 3. 16 divided by 2 gives us 8. So the ratio may be 6 to 16, but the value of that ratio, which I'm going to write off to the side just for space reasons, is 3 eighths. Finally, uh, if you look at our next ratio, which is 12 to 32. We want to write that as a ratio over here. I know those are obviously both even numbers, so I can divide them by at least by 2. But also, I know I can divide those by 4 because th uh, 1, 2, 3, and 4 all go into 12. So 4 is the highest number. 4 also goes into 32. Uh, 6 goes into 12, but it does not go into 32. And 12 does not go into 32. So the highest number we can look at is 4. 12 divided by 4 gives us 3. 32 divided by 4 gives us 8. So the value of 12 to 32, that's the ratio. The value is 3 eighths. So what do you notice about the value of the equivalent ratios? Well, let's take a look. 1 to 2 and 5 to 10 are both equivalent ratios. 6 to 16 and 12 to 32 are both equivalent ratios. Well, they all have the same value as the other equivalent ratios. So 1 to 2 and 5 to 10, their value is, are both, the value of both of them are 1 half. The value of 6 to 16 and 12 to 32, both of those values are 3 eighths. So when uh, two ratios are equivalent, then they also have an equal value, which is that fraction in simplest form. Another way you can look at whether the ratios are equivalent, if I were to write 6 sixteenths, and then I would write 12 to 32 as 12 over 32, if I want to see if those are equivalent ratios, I write them as fractions, and then see what would my magic number be, right? So 6 times what would get 12? Well, we know 6 times 2 is 12. Is 16 times 2 32? It is. So if you can multiply the numerator 
and the denominator by the same number, which in this case is 2, then you have equivalent ratios, same as equivalent fractions. Okay, let's look at another example here, exercise 3, and by the way, these are all from Eureka Math. Uh, it says, Tavon is training for a duathlon, which is a race that consists of running and cycling. So he's doing two things here. The cycling leg is longer than the running leg of the race. So while Tavon trains, he rides his bike more than he runs. During training, Tavon runs 4 miles for every 14 miles he rides his bike. Part A says identify the ratio associated with this problem and find its value. Well, it says he runs 4 miles for every, that shows us it's going to be a ratio, 14 miles he rides his bike. So I'm going to say run to bike because that's the order it's in up here. He runs 4 miles for every 14 miles he rides his bike. That, my friends, is the ratio. It also says find its value. So make sure we read really read this correctly, right? So 4 to 14 is the ratio. But the value, I've got to take that 4 to 14 and make it into 4 fourteenths. And I know, hey, I'm going to have a magic number that I can divide those by. They're both even. Uh, the only numbers that go into 4 are 1, which we can't use because it wouldn't change anything, 2, and 4. Well, if I look at 14, 4 does not go into 14 evenly, so we've got to go with 2. 4 divided by 2 is 2. 14 divided by 2 is 7. So the value of that ratio is 2 sevenths. The ratio of the problem, 4 to 14. The value of that ratio is 2 sevenths. Okay, for the next part it says use the value to solve the following. So we know the value is two sevenths, so we're going to use that again, right? When Tavon completed all of his training for the duathlon, the ratio of total number of miles he ran to the total number of miles he cycled was 80 to 280. Is this consistent with Tavon's training schedule? Explain why or why not. Well, we know he wanted his training schedule to be two sevenths. If we look at 80 to 280, basically we need to find the value of this and see, is it two sevenths or not. So to find the value, we're going to look at 80 over 280. Now there's two ways we could do this. We could find what number goes into 80 and 280 equally, and we could uh, divide by our magic number and see if it equals two sevenths. All right, we can do that. Another way we could do it would be to say, okay, we want to see if it equals two sevenths. Is there a magic number that I can multiply 2 sevenths by to get me 80 over 280? Well, 2 goes into 8 four times, but we're not talking about 8, we're talking about 80, so we're going to add that 0 in. 2 times 40 gives me 80. For this to be true, 7 times 40 must equal 280. Well, I know 7 times 4 is 28. I add on the 0 because that's another place value. So it is true. 2 sevenths, you can multiply both by the same number, which is 40. It gives us 80 over 280. So yes, it was consistent with the training schedule because what he actually did had the same value of what his training, or his training schedule was. Okay, in one training session, Tavon ran four miles and cycled seven miles. Did this one training session represent an equivalent ratio to the uh, ratio of the distance he ran to the distance he cycled? Explain why or why not. Okay, well, we know he will say ran and use his bicycle because that's, I would say cycle, but we said bike up here. Well, in this particular one, he went four to seven. We can look at that as 4 sevenths. That value I can't simplify. So that, I can't simplify that. So that is the value. 4 sevenths of that one training session is the value. Is that the same of the value that we already found up here? 2 sevenths? Well, the denominators are the same, but the numerators are different. So that, in fact, is not. So this training session 
did not, no, it did not represent an equivalent ratio because the values were different. Okay, I hope today that you see that the value, you can look at that ratio as a fraction and then simplify it, and that is the value. So we have kind of two things we look at here, the ratio and the value of the ratio. The ratio looks like a ratio. We could say um, four to six. Well, the value, we have to write that as four six, and we know that, that could be simplified. So the ratio may be four to six. The value of that ratio is two thirds. We'll talk more about this in class. Thank you for watching.